something called price discrimination. This is a technique that sellers use when they have some market power, particularly, for example, monopolies. Uh, and they're able to set prices, but in order to maximize their profit, they know that some of their customers have a different elasticity of demand than others. That is, some customers are willing to pay more for a product than other customers. And so they'd like to be able to charge that one segment a higher price, but still keep the, the other customers and satisfy them with perhaps a lower price. Uh, a couple of examples of that. Uh, if you're running a theater, it may be that at 6.30 in the evening is prime time when people really like to show up. And in particular, people who've been working all day and probably have a little more money. And they're out for a nice leisure time in the evening. But in the afternoons, there's still people that would like to come to the movies, but maybe they are more predominantly students or uh, stay-at-home moms minding the kids, which means maybe their income is not as great. And so the afternoon market has, let's say, a lower income and therefore perhaps a more elastic demand. That is, if the price drops a little bit, many more of them will come to the movie, but if the price gets up there pretty high, they'll stay home. But in the evening, they're willing to pay the higher price because for them it's kind of a night on the town. So what do you do as a theater? Well, you have matinee shows in the afternoon with discounted prices, and then you have your, quote, regular prices in the evenings for the market of people who are willing to pay a higher price. That's fundamental price discrimination. Let's take a look at how that works graphically, and then talk about a couple of other uh, iterations on the idea. What we're going to assume here first is that we have a company that has a constant marginal cost. We do that just because it makes it simple. Okay, yeah, you can have the regular rising marginal cost curve, but it doesn't help the explanation, okay? Now, in this market, let's say there's two, two segments. There's one market that has a demand curve, let's say, out here. And let's make it, uh, oh, fairly ela inelastic, okay? There's demand curve number one for market segment number one. Uh, maybe these are the evening uh, customers for your theater, the ones that show up later in the evening. Then there is also, let's say, market number two. Slightly more elastic demand, okay? Maybe not as many of them in terms of quantity, okay? And we say, well, given a constant marginal cost, how can I maximize my profit in each market? And so then we have to remember what? The profit maximizing rule, which is what? Take the quantity where your marginal revenue equals your marginal cost for that market, okay? So, where's the marginal revenue curve for demand curve number one? I'm just kind of making it up here, but let's say that it comes down somewhere like that. This is going to get messy. That's the fun of economics. Here's our marginal revenue curve for market number one. So, where does marginal revenue equal marginal cost? Well, right here. That tells us the right quantity we want to sell and reading up to the demand curve, wherever it is, and over. That tells us the price we want to charge in that first market. So for the evening moviegoers with a slightly more inelastic demand, and maybe there's more of them out there, let's say we're going to charge them $10 for a movie ticket. Well, what about the afternoon market? Fairly elastic demand, smaller quantities involved because it's a smaller market. We look for the marginal revenue curve associated with that demand curve. We'll call that marginal revenue curve number two. We see that it intersects the marginal cost curve here. So that's our quantity and that's our price for market number two. So let's say we'll charge them $7.00 for a matinee show, an afternoon show, because their demand demands more elastic. But what we've done now is we've charging two different prices in two different markets. Now, there are three things that have to be in place in order for us to successfully do this. First of all, we've got to be able to identify the markets. We've got to know who they are. We've got to be able to recognize them. Well, that's pretty easy if you're showing in the evening shows and the afternoon shows, you know which ones are which. If it's perhaps, this is the ticket for students, they get a discount. 
then in order to recognize them and segregate them, the second important part, not only recognize that they have different demands and elasticities, but be able to segregate them from one another, we say, well, you can't buy this ticket without a student ID. And yeah, we all know how people work around that, but that's the principle. So we've got to be able to identify the segments and segregate them, and then we've got to make sure that they can't sell back and forth between the two markets, what we call arbitrage. That you can't go in and buy a $7 ticket and then sell it to somebody later for the $10 show. And so maybe we color the tickets differently or whatever like that. Okay. So that's fundamental, basic, what we call third degree price discrimination. It's we identify different segments of the market with different elasticities and different marginal revenue curves. We identify different profit maximizing prices and output for each market, and we charge accordingly. Uh, another example, this demand curve number two, might be uh, in a restaurant in the afternoons or evenings for seniors. Maybe they give, se give senior citizens a discount to encourage more of them in. Okay? Third degree price discrimination. Now just quickly in passing, second degree price discrimination typically says when you, when you buy uh, certain quantities, you get this price, but if you buy in these quantities, you get this price, and so you're trying to take the, the really heavy users or the people that buy a lot of your product and, and encourage them with a lower price. First degree price discrimination I think is much more interesting. If you've ever been on a, a, a car lot, particularly a used car lot, and talked to the salesperson about buying a used car, what do you find? What you find is you have to negotiate or haggle with them for quite a bit because we're talking about you know, how much are you going to be willing to pay? Let me see if I can bring that price down. And you're trying. What is that salesperson really trying to do? He is trying to find out your maximum price that you're willing to pay. And it may well be that if you go on the car lot and look at this particular car with this particular salesman, you'll walk out of there with him having quoted you this price. But if I come in an hour later, look at the same car, talk to the same salesperson, he may wind up quoting me a different price altogether, thinking that I can pay more or I can pay less. So the salesperson's job, particularly in negotiated sales, is try to, to, to get you to pay the highest price you're willing to pay. Now in the ideal world, where you could take every customer who comes into your business, negotiate with him and get him to pay his highest willing price, and you did that with every single customer, you would extract the consumer surplus, if you will, from every customer, and you would maximize your profit. That would be uh, first degree price discrimination. So those are the basics. Nothing really overly complicated about it except the, the graph, because the lines get a little messy. It may help you to erase the demand curves and just think of the marginal revenue curves and look at it for those two intersection points. If you're in any of my classes, you may recall the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost, I call alpha, because that's where we begin a lot of our analysis. So here would be alpha for demand curve one, and here would be alpha for demand curve number two. Alpha tells us the quantity, and in order to sell that quantity, we read up to the demand curve or the price line, and we say, ah, that's the price I've got to charge. Price discrimination. Okay, thank you.